So unless you've been living under a rock, tariffs are here. So this video is being basically made as much as a just historical preservation as anything else. I mean, I'm not really looking at specific builds here. The one thing I'm trying to figure out is roughly what can $1,000 buy you as far as a gaming PC goes here right before tariffs might start messing with certain components. Uh, whether they're made in certain countries obviously will have a major impact, but even if the components are coming from non-tariffed countries, there could be indirect effects on pricing that has, as well as availability as people sort of panic buy. So I want to take a look at some gaming PCs that you could purchase for around $1,000, as well as what they would cost you if you were building those PCs or something similar to them yourself right now. So let's dive into it and see what thousand dollars gets you in the pre-tariff world and yes i know there's tariffs already just before the new ones anyway okay so we have new egg pulled up here and i know that's not your favorite marketplace all the time but uh, we're gonna roll with new egg because of the sorting features they have are a little bit more robust than certain other places uh and a little bit more managed here on Newegg. But basically all I've done here is picked the 750 to 999 dollar price point and 99 cents if you really care to uh, round it up. Yes, technically that does leave a penny for our budget, but realistically everything that's going to cost $1000 is going to cost 99.99. So Anyways, we are jumping into sorting here by lowest price. Um, and at the very bottom end of our range here, we have a Ryzen 5600, 16 gigs of memory, a GTX 1660 Super, which I can already tell you, this is not a PC to purchase because of that GPU. You're much better off spending another, you know, two, $250 to get a much better GPU and a lot more storage, potentially even more RAM, and also likely a better CPU. So moving on down, we have some refurbished stuff here. This is a terrible value, a 3400G. Like, okay, to be fair. Sorry, Newegg, to be fair. Not sold by Newegg. So don't buy this PC. It's, it's really bad. I really do have to say, and, and I'm sure almost all of these are third-party sellers, on Newegg, but there is a lot of trash on Newegg as far as uh, these PCs that they're selling goes. Like, you got a GTX 1050 Ti. So, do your research. If there was ever an endorsement of do your research, this is it. Do your research and know what you should be able to purchase. Obviously, if it's a build your own setup, like if you're on PC Part Picker, you can expect to pay more for a PC that's already been built for you but it shouldn't be an insane amount. And these PCs, if you were parting them together yourself, knowing that a lot of these are used parts at this point, like there aren't new RX 580s being manufactured or 1050 Ti's, at least not that I'm aware of. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of trash here. Okay, you know what? I can do this a lot simpler here. Just with the GPU drop down, and this is where filters are super nice. I have my uh, my price already defined, so I can go into the GPUs and select uh, PCs that have these GPUs. And the easiest way of doing this, if you're building a gaming PC, you're going to want the best possible GPU. Go to the GPU and pick the best one. And we've got NVIDIA, the RTX 4060 Ti. Apparently, there's a couple of options there. We're also going to go to the 7000 series for uh, AMD and pick the 7700 XT. And you know what? For the 30 series, let's go ahead and pick a 3080 as well just to see what is available here. And now we're talking. Okay, so we've got this uh, Ryzen 5 5600. Eh. Uh, it's a 7700 XT, which is a really nice GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD. Uh, major concerns about the case, though. Uh, just looking at this case, uh, the airflow is likely to be absolutely terrible in that. Okay, so right on the money here, this PC I can get behind quite a bit. Um, you have an 8-core 
uh, CPU. It's not obviously the newest generation, but eight cores, 16 threads. You have a 4060 Ti, obviously a solid GPU. You've got a terabyte of storage, which is solid. You even get Wi-Fi in there, which is a nice little bonus. But what I really like looking at the case itself is this case has pretty solid looking airflow uh, with three case fans. What I don't like is uh, they're using kind of a stock picture here. And what you'll notice is it shows GTX there. This is not a new card that's being displayed in that picture. So hopefully the case is accurate and everything else. And that's just a sort of a stock picture they're using because I would be an RTX, not GTX, but an RTX 4060 Ti, the cooler hyper 212. That's going to be a solid cooler. So yeah, this PC should actually provided that it's put together. Well, should actually be a pretty solid performer. So this is probably going to be my baseline for uh, PCs to look at, but we'll keep looking for just a minute here. Uh, an i5 14400F. Mm, uh, this one does have more RAM, 32 gigs of RAM, which is really good. So if you're comfortable with Intel, then this one looks like it would also be a pretty solid uh, PC as well. And in case you were wondering, the RTX 3080s, those are both refreshed, refurbished, whatever you want to call them. But uh, you could get one with 32 gigs of RAM, uh, 12900KF with an RTX 3080. I'm curious about the power supply of this guy, an 850 watt power supply. So this would also not really be a bad option, provided that... Uh, it does work reasonably well, provided that it's refurbished properly and there's not a bunch of issues with it. But this would actually probably be a solid PC as well. But we're going to go with new. And just so you know, the comparison point here, if you were buying all new parts uh, to match up with the uh, 4060 Ti, a Ryzen 5700X, uh, your total would be about $832 in parts. And everything I did here was comparable, at least as best as I could go for. So uh, comparably built $832. That's what you get in the pre-tariff world, at least right now. We will see if these prices fluctuate up and down. Um, I was actually texting a friend earlier today who is in the process of building a gaming PC. And I sort of told him if I were him because he's searching for GPUs right now. That's kind of the hang up on the system. Um, just because he's trying to get it together in the not great distant future, he missed out on uh, the 5080s when they launched, wasn't able to grab one of those. Um, I sort of told him what I would do because the RTX 4000 series is pretty unobtainable as far as pricing goes right now. I kind of recommended just going the AMD route because you could get a really solid card, might not perform quite as well in ray tracing or certain other workflows, but at least you can get a card now before any possible tariffs start to hit the supply chains and start driving up prices. Uh, once again, I don't actually know what this is gonna do to the supply and demand sides of the GPU markets. We'll see. But this video, more so uh, than just looking at the PCs that you can get for $1,000, just kind of serves as a look back. At the very beginning of February 2025, this is what pricing was. Hopefully pricing is even better in a few months, but I fear that if the tariffs sort of last for a while, if no trade negotiations are had and no deals are worked out, this could end up being a longer term problem. So we'll look back here in a few months and see what prices look like. Uh, maybe do an update video. But otherwise, I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware and I'll see you all in the next video.